social, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, and Twitter, wherever you are in the social media world. My name is Jamie J, and I am the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Virtual Assistants. And as I like to say, it's not about me today. It's not about bottleneck. It's about how to stop the bottleneck in your business. And that's why I'm excited to be talking with Dan Paulson today. So uh, stay tuned as we begin live with Bottleneck. We'll be back in 38 seconds. Jamie J. I am the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Virtual Assistance, and we are live with Bottleneck. As you know, one of my main goals is to help you stop the bottleneck in your business. And what is that bottleneck? Well, uh, it's usually me. It's usually you. It's whoever is leading that organization or that team uh, because it's really hard to get out of our way sometimes. So the whole reason that I created this live with bottleneck, uh, live stream show, uh, is so that I can introduce those people to you that have impacted me positively and that have, have really good thought processes in place to help alleviate the stress, the overwhelm, all those situations that create the bottleneck in your business. And so today I am going to be talking with Dan Paulson. He's the CEO of Envision Development International. And we're going to be talking about generating scalable growth through people, planning, and process. As you know, I'm a big fan of systems and processes. So I'm really, really excited about talking uh, to Dan today. And why are we talking with Dan? Well, Dan is an accomplished international speaker, author, and facilitator, and coach. Throughout his career, Dan has developed passion for helping leaders find ways to grow business while improving the experience for both employees and customers. He combines deep, on-the-ground corporate experience with the evolving wisdom of current business trends to facilitate the most successful, adaptable, and innovative, innovative work environments possible. And so please uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Dan Paulson. How are you, sir? Hey, good. How are you, Jamie? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, my gosh. That intro makes me sound really good. I have to be sure I record that. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped to be uh, talking to you today. I'm a big systems and processes uh, advocate and freak, uh, if, you, if, if, if I may say so. And I really appreciate that this is kind of your driver. This is kind of like how you help people. And I wonder if maybe we can start the conversation off today by you kind of introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm happy to. So uh, Dan Paulson, Envision Development International. Uh, as Jamie mentioned, I'm the CEO. I started this company about 15 years ago after I came out of corporate America and realized I got sick of playing corporate politics. And I had a number of connections to, to other small, medium-sized businesses, realized that there are a lot of good people out there who have great ideas, who might even have you know a, a great customer service experience, and they just hit that wall where they can't seem to grow anymore. And, and what I found was a lot of those cases really centered around the owner who was the guy who started the business, who now, you know, here we are 10 to 15 years later, has reached a point where it's been successful, but he hits he hits that ceiling where he just can't seem to get to that next level. And a lot of that stems from, as Jamie talked about, it, it's systems and process, but it's also combining that with people, culture, and creating the right environment for it. Because while systems and process work great, if you don't have the people doing the right things or they're not following those procedures, that becomes a huge issue. Also, those people that do the work every day often know what the things are that need to be fixed. They just need to be empowered to do it. And, and that's where I really work with the business owner to figure out how to make that happen. I love it. That, that's, it some people refer to it as getting stuck or um, yes. some of us 
we don't know what we don't know. We kind of have an idea of what we want. We want to see that, you know, I started a business because I want to be able to do this and I want to be able to help people out in this way. But getting there is a whole nother ball game. And yeah, it's a lot of it's fear of letting go, oh, right? I mean, oh. Jamie, you started your own business. I started my own business. You reach a point where it achieves a certain level of success and you know that you can just do it. You can just do it and make it happen. The problem is, again, as you grow and as you scale and as things get bigger, it gets more complicated. And then it gets to a point where you can't just do it yourself. So you hire people, but then you want to make sure they're doing it the way you want it done. And then you're getting in their way and slowing them down. And then if they have good ideas, you're not listening because that's not the way you did things. And it's just, you got to break down that whole mess. You just hit the nail on the head of about three or four different major areas that stump a lot of us as leaders, um, either in organizations or specific teams within an, within a uh, higher uh, within within an organization itself. And both you and I come out of corporate America, um, and I can empathize with you. It, I was in corporate America for twelve years. Uh, it took me eleven years to figure out how to get out of corporate America. <laughs> I was Eleven years of recovery, in. right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's the same thing, you know. You're you're running into these walls, and like, man, I wish we could just do this. Then you got to get past legal. You got to get past your manager. And then when you finally sell the idea to them, then it goes to another, and you're just like, Lord Almighty, we could have been done with this already. And it's just stifling. But but at the same time, for those people in corporate America that are enjoying it, all all the power to you. Um, this is more along the lines of of what I'm hoping today to get to learn from you is. How do we get unstuck when we reach that certain amount? And that's my first question. My second question, which is a long answer, I imagine can go down a bunch of different rabbit holes. But the second question I really want to dive into is how do you get out of your own way? How do you let the people that you bring on board take the ball and run? And so I'd love to touch bases on both of those aspects. So with regards to the first one, what are some of the things that you can do? What are some, maybe some signs that you might be able to identify to saying, I'm kind of stuck here. Um, maybe sure. I'm going to reach out to Dan. <laughs> and, and we only have 20 minutes, right? So yeah. <laughs> uh, start the clock because we're, this is going to be a, a turbo session. On. So uh, let's start thing, with how uh, you... One, one, one quick thing too. If anybody has yeah. any questions or comments for Dan, please ask away. If for some reason, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you see this on a replay or we've already ended the live, and you have a question that you thought of a little bit later, ask away in the comments and I'll make sure to forward that to Dan to, to get your question answered. So sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to kind of let everybody know. Awesome. Ask away. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right. So first of all, how do you get unstuck? And I think it, it goes to the old 12 step program. First, you have to realize you have a problem, right? Uh, how do you realize you have a problem? Because a, a lot of times what I say is people are in the weeds. They're, they're so ingrained in their business they don't take the time to work on their business. And that really stems from, again, that, that whole idea of how do you find how to grow to that next step? And when you're trying to grow and you're running into problems where you realize that either your people aren't doing the right things, aren't doing what they need to do to grow, um, they aren't getting you the information you need to make decisions, or even if they are, you don't have time to make those decisions. Often what the trigger points are, or what I hear from my clients, is it usually comes from a significant other, a friend, a family member, typically a spouse, that are all starting to question, what are the activities that you're doing and why aren't you engaged with us when, when you're at a, a, a party or when you're on vacation? Uh, the biggest stressor I often hear is, you know, people go on vacations and they can't separate themselves from their laptop or their phone. They can't enjoy time with their family. And, and this is where it bleeds into that work-life balance. So when you find that the quality of life is eroding, and even though you have a, a successful business, it's not fulfilling anymore. So maybe even you're losing passion in what you're doing. Those are, are often red flags that should alert you that maybe it's time to really look at how you're doing things so you can re-engage in your business. Because if you're not engaged in your business, and especially if you have employees, they're not going to be engaged. And that means then quality of work, quality of life for everybody goes downhill. And, and ultimately, over time, it will eventually get to the point where your business won't function properly. And it, it, think of it as an engine in a car. If you don't give it a tune-up, if you don't change the oil, if you don't do regular maintenance, things are going to break down. And eventually, those breakdowns could be catastrophic. They could leave you alongside the highway or worse yet, 
something could fail to the point where you could cause a crash and potentially end your life. So that's why we we know enough that we need to change the oil every so often. We need to do the tune-ups. We need to follow the scheduled maintenance. We often don't do that with our businesses and we don't do that with ourselves because we just assume, and this is you know, a struggle of American culture. This is what we grew up with. I'm a farm kid. So you know, it was roll up your sleeves, get to work, and you do that 24-7. And, and you know, the next day, we repeat the cycle all over again. And we have to learn how to work differently. Technology allows us to do that. The people we have around us can allow us to do that. But first, we got to realize that we are the center of that problem. And until we, we break down or understand that we need to make those changes, it's going to be very hard to make that happen or to get out of your own way. So that's really the first step. So did I answer the question, Jamie? hundred percent. Now we all know we can't go into a huge amount of detail. We've only got a certain right. amount of time, but yeah, basically it's, it's taking responsibility for your action. And when you initially start a business out, there's a business plan or whatever that you come up with. Most people do come up mm -hmm. with business plans. I, I call it a brand profile. It's it's, but it's, it's a plan. It's a way that you're getting a message out there. You have a, uh, uh, an answer or you can help so solve somebody else's problems. And in essence, that's, you know, that's business. That's how you build businesses, providing solutions. I hate using that term because it's so general, but you provide answers to very, very different problems out there. One of the things that, that I, I'm the big fan of is systems and processes of, of which I, I admire you so much for, because I, I understand that's the, the foundation of your business. So what are some of the things that people can do, keeping in mind that a process or a workflow, in my opinion, is a living, breathing document? What does that mean? It's constantly being changed because the more you grow, the more friction points you identify. And every every there's different segments. And maybe you can tell me, you, you know, one through 25 employees, it's this. 25 and above, it's this. Or one through 12, it's this. But things are going to start changing and you have to be able to overcome and adapt for that. And I wonder if maybe you can help us kind of guide us through what you think, um, what you define as having a good system with or a good process so that you can get yourself out of the way. Yeah. You know, systems and processes, they're the lifeblood of any business because they provide that consistency. When it comes to customer experience, if you can't provide a consistent product or service, that makes it rather difficult to create longevity in the business. It also makes it difficult to train new people when they come come on board if there isn't some sort of process in place. Now, there's you were asking kind of what's the what are the you know trigger points or you know when is it that first employee is that 50th employee whatever it might be. I would say anytime you are making that first hire that's probably the hardest one because in most cases again you've been doing all the work so there's no systems in place. And ideally you would bring a person on and they would have a training program. There'd be an onboarding process. All these things would be ready and available, but often they're not. So what tends to happen is you hire that first person, you put them in a chair, you give them a computer and a phone and you tell them to go at it. And for the next six months to a year, they're fumbling through everything and figuring it out on their own. So a big part of what I work with the owners on is, is start laying out some of these processes early. They don't have to be complex. They don't have to be super detailed because usually when you hire that employee, they're finding things to improve already, but you have to give them a baseline to work from. So first we start with, with the basic outline of a process. This is this perfect because Aaron says, when you're growing, when do you start outsourcing? How do you create a budget <laughs> for outsourcing when you are first getting started? That's a, that's a great question. So when do you start outsourcing? It might be, you know, I like to say it's on day one, but usually most companies I see need to spend about a year to three years kind of figuring out their way. I, I don't remember statistics anymore. I don't think they've changed all that much though, but usually 80% of the companies survive to like year, year three or five, or it's the other way around. 80% of the companies usually don't survive till the, the year year three or year five. So you're really trying to figure it out and figure out if you have the right product offering and everything else. Once you figure that out, and once you start growing beyond the capacity where you can do everything, and capacity is something I talk a lot with clients about too, how much, and it's mostly a feel, how much of a percentage of your workload can you handle on any given day? And what I tell people is once you get to about 70 to 80%, 
that's when you need to find some way to offload that work, whether it be outsourcing to somebody like you, uh, a marketing person, whatever it might be, what are those things you need to offload to have somebody else to do? Because once you start cresting over that 80%, now you start working into you know the point where you're really booked out all the time that you're working. And then there's not enough time to look at what new products or services you offer, what other ways do you grow? When do you add that next employee? Most people want to wait till 100% capacity and then they want to add that next person. Well, now you don't have any time to train. Yeah. You don't have any time. Uh, if you're using an outsource person like yourself, you don't have any time to educate that person on what they need to do to make help them be effective for you. And, and I'm sure you probably run into that, Jamie, with, when you're onboarding somebody getting the right information and trying to figure out how you're going to work with them the best. So you provide return on investment for them. And if you're working with a one-off person, that can be rather difficult because a lot of times they don't even know what they do. I'm working with a client right now. She does a lot of work with uh, actually helping people get their MBAs. So she's got a consulting service and we're working on scaling her business. So we're going through this process right now. We're laying out everything that she does and and what she continuously tells me is I don't realize how much I do until I stop, think about and write down the steps and then realize what I have to train on. So we're building this whole process knowing we're, we're probably not helping her hire a person for another six months at least. But we've got to have all these systems in place so that way when we bring that person on, they can they can be rather effective out of the gate or at least she knows what to coach to when that person has questions. And we've also addressed, again, the 80-20 rule. You want 80% of the issues addressed and only deal with 20% of the other questions or gray area that's going to pop up along the way. So we try to manage that throughout the process. I love it. So in looking at this question, when you're growing, when do you start outsourcing? Well, I think you start building your systems, as according to what you said, and if I understand right. you, you start building, building your systems right now. Um, right. We were saying that we learned from our good friend, Scott Beebe over at My Business on Purpose, do something as if it's the last time you're ever going to do it. And what that means is document everything that we're doing. And I'd love to know what kind of tools you have. For us, we use what we call a delegation roadmap. And what we, what we do is we, because we really help people when they begin to hire, you're right, you nailed it. They're not really ready. They, they don't know what they don't know. So we give them a tool called a delegation roadmap. And what we ask them to do is list down every single task they do in a given day and assign two values to that. Number one, is this something they must do or can they delegate this to someone else who can do it 80% as good as them or better? And the reason we say 80% is so that we get our clients in the mindset knowing that there's going to be room for improvement because when you first bring them on, it's going to get tougher before it gets better. Um, it's just a fact of life and a fact of business, actually. And, and it's challenging, but you have to understand that. And the second thing is, is it something that gives you energy or drains you of energy? Now you can segment that list of tasks you do every day. And now you have some kind of an example of all the tasks you do that can, number one, be delegated. And number two, do not give you energy. So why do those anyways? Right. Give it to somebody else who absolutely thrives in that in that element. So what, what kind of tools do you have? Well, there, there's a number of different tools you can use. Um, if they're working with me, a lot of times it, it's it's more cave managed than technology driven. I will actually have them, we'll, we'll do a process map. So what you're talking about is mapping everything out. We'll actually walk through beginning to end how they do their job on any given day. We'll line up what those different procedures are and then we'll break them down even further. We'll, we'll actually show almost a flow chart of how that works. And that's one of the things I do. I'll help them create a flow chart so that they can see how their process flow works. Then we backtrack through that and pretty much what you're saying, what are the things that you need to do? What are the things you need to delegate? Uh, it amazes me. Most people get stuck on the things that they hate. They don't get them done, but they also don't want to let them go. I don't understand that, but <laughs> that's, well, that's there's control, to be right? the nature of the beast, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the whole control issue. So we look at those things and it really comes down to when you are a business owner or a CEO, and if you are looking to scale your company beyond being a solopreneur, it's figuring out how much stuff you can let go to grow, to work on just the growth side of things, really. It's about creating that vision and making sure that you're staying profitable. That's the primary job as a business owner when you have employees. The employees should be taking care of everything else based on their duties and responsibilities. And that's where 
laying out the process, you can then start to categorize and say, okay, if we're going to outsource, for example, maybe it's marketing. Marketing is usually an easy one, but it could also be your your customer service side of thing, or your or your uh, you know outsource or your inbound calling. Those are things that could be outsourced. Um, it could be your accounting and your bookkeeping. Those are other things that can be outsourced. It really does come down to what are the things that tie you up most, but really provide the least amount of joy in what you do. And you want to minimize the amount of things that really take away from where you drive that passion for your business and focus on the things that will help you get there. Because what I find is the more in the weeds you are in your business, the less creative you are on finding solutions. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the last six months to a year, there's been a lot going on more than any any year that I can recollect for the last 50 of all the change that's happened, positive, negative, or otherwise. And if you're not positioned to really overcome these issues and find creative ways to pivot or work around it, it's going to be very difficult. You're going to find yourself in a rut. And if you're in the right, right rut, that's fine. I know some businesses that lucked out and they were on the right side of the COVID thing and, and their business actually took off. Well, that's a whole nother issue that you've got to work on. If you're on the wrong side of this and you've been shut down and now you got to figure out how to make sales when you don't have any employees in or you can't bring customers into your door, that's a whole other issue. And if you don't have time to work on that, once you do have time, unfortunately, you're usually in a panic situation. And I don't know about you, Jamie, but anytime I'm in a panic situation, the last thing I'm I can think about is something creative to solve my problem. <laughs> yeah, you're so you're so it's so much on the negative. Yeah, you're stuck on the negative. Plus, you're you're stressing. So it's not your intellectual brain that's working. It's your lizard brain, the fight or flight principles that we all struggle with on everything that we do. And if we're stuck in that rut, it's going to be very hard to figure out what's that next leap or that next level that you can jump to. And, and that's where I really, when I start working with somebody, want to find out where they're at stress-wise, because if they're too stressed out, we're going to keep running into the same issue, which is we've either done that before, that didn't work. Or this is how we do things. This is always how we do things. We're not changing this. So we, we lose that flexibility. When we're in more of a, a relaxed intellectual state, we can start questioning things and working through dialogue on figuring out how, how to improve. So that's really what we have to look at when, whenever it comes down to you know, how you lay, lay out the process. And what, are, what are some tools you can use? That's one of the things that you ask. Um, you know, things, project management tools like Trello, Basecamp, I've used any one of those. Uh, Lucid Chart is a wonderful tool if you want to process map out uh, your systems and actually flow chart it and then assign responsibilities to certain things. I've done that with a number of clients. Uh, there are tons of, of productivity apps. Microsoft has things. Um, Visio, I've used that before. Um, but there, if you use any sort of mobile applications, whether it be uh, you know, something on your iPhone or iPad all the way down to any of your Android products, there's always something that will help you through that process. And it can be as simple. I was talking with a client last night. He wanted just a simple way to measure goals, track it to dates and have reminders that he should get things completed. And that was just using his uh, his tasks app in his iPhone. That's that's all it was. We talked about using all these other things. And he's like, no, that's too complicated. I just need something really to keep me on task or keep me on track. And then I also need something that I can use with my team that's a little bit simpler than what we're doing through the process, the, the project management side of things. So that, that's really what we come up with. So it's not always the most complicated solution that you need to integrate. Sometimes it's just something real simple you need to apply to really make make that difference, make something happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I initially uh, I, I chose the word stuck earlier because a lot of people get stuck and yep. they really don't know what to do. And so they need to reach out to, to you, Dan, and, you know, to help <laughs> get unstuck. One of the things that, that we have found has been really helpful because you're right. Uh, you know, it's our baby. It's our business. We don't want to we don't want somebody else coming in and messing it up. And we have to be very careful. And, and I think that's a big thing with a lot of business leaders. They can't get out of their own way. And so one of the things that we've done here, and it's been very helpful, is create a video step by step of what it is that you do for that process. And then we have whoever we're going to be delegating that task to write out step by step in written form 
after watching that video. And then we meet again to revisit that and we go over it. And that does two things for us. Number one, it lets me as a business owner get out of my own head what's going on. And it lets me know that, hey, they understand this process here. And number two, I can also identify any areas that they misinterpret or misunderstood so that we don't worry about that happening three, six, nine, 12 months down the road. We can deal with that right now, make that correction, and then have them go to town. And all of a sudden now I have all the confidence in the world. They're going to be able to carry that certain task out at least 80% as good as I can so that I can, I don't have to worry about that. I can focus on what you said, I believe the high level activity or whatever it is that you, that you really need to do. Talk with Dan Paulson, you know, <laughs> you may, uh, align yourselves with other partners, uh, you know, right. go on event, go to events and do all the stuff that an owner should be doing. Uh, do you have anything that, that, that you use to help kind of alleviate the stress of delegation? Well, you, you brought up some very good points, actually. That's, that's another good thing we should talk about is people learn different ways. So I was talking with a client this morning, actually, as we're going through this training process. And one of the things that she brought up is, well, you know, for this process, I send this email. And for that process, I send that email. And like, well, when do you actually talk with these people? Because she's working with clients. So she's actually, in a way, you know, training them, right? So one of the challenges that I explained to her is that we get so focused on doing something one way that we forget people learn through visual, they learn through auditory, they learn through kinesthetic. When you are applying any sort of learning, you need to incorporate some level of all three. So what you brought up with actually having the video in place and having the person watch the video and then respond with, with a questionnaire or with a, a test to make sure they're understanding or interpreting the material, I think is very powerful. Most companies, again, just want to get the quick hit, get it in, get it out, sign off on it, but there's not enough follow-up. And what I find is, you know, beyond the videos, beyond the worksheets, beyond uh, any sort of written documentation you have is regular communication. It, with pretty much all my clients, we incorporate something called a huddle. That huddle can happen at the beginning of the day, at the middle of the day, at the end of the day. It really depends on what works best for your business, but it's a time for everyone to come together and it's different than other meetings you have. I strongly believe that any meeting you, you hold has to have a purpose, has to have an outcome, has to set some sort of, of goal ahead of it. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time with more meetings. And I came from meeting hell. The last corporate job I had, we scheduled meetings to have more meetings, to schedule more meetings, to make decisions about scheduling more meetings, to have more meetings. It was frustrating. And I would never <laughs> put that on it. America, by the way, was JT for Jamie time because I hated meetings. <laughs> and all our show plays, we were like, why are we even having this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. And, and, you know, the joke right now is, is we've, the meetings, we finally realized what meetings could have been handled with an email. And now we're kind of saying the same thing about Zoom calls, because Zoom has now become the, the thing that everybody is doing pretty much for eight hours a day. So we're back to the same thing. We're wasting a lot of time doing meetings that are not productive. We think they're informative. We think they're helping people out, but really it's just the opposite. We're, we're eating up a lot of time. And again, depending upon your learning style might actually be taking away from when they could be more productive. However, meetings can hold an important value. So something like a, a daily touch base, a, a huddle where you can pull people together for 10 to 15 minutes, that's all it is. And it's really to just focus on the workflow of the day. If it's a learning, you know, you hire a new employee, for example, if it's a learning opportunity, something like that can be just really covering what you expect them to, what knowledge you expect them to gain today, and then the follow up the next day on what they did and where they're stuck and things like that. Um, so those, those huddles, that continuous communication also provides accountability. People often don't account for that. I can't tell you the number of business owners who tell me, well, I told that person what to do. Okay, how many times did you tell them? Well, I told them once, they should know. They don't, they don't. And they, um, most importantly, they don't know how you want it done. So that's where it comes into the communication, the back and forth and the follow-up to make sure that they really understand where you're coming from on this. It's very difficult for people to understand that a lot of cases because they don't realize that training isn't just a one and done event, it is an, is an ongoing process that you need to do with all your staff all the time. That's how you create this cohesive team and also create an excellent customer experience is when communication is going back and forth and we're realizing what things are working, what things need to improve. And, and as you pointed out, 
any process should be able to be updated at any time once a better way is found to do it. Well, the only way that happens is when there's dialogue taking place. It shouldn't just be written down. It shouldn't just be done step by step. And it shouldn't be locked in so tight that the person who's doing that procedure can't come back to you and at least make commentary on what could be changed or improved. And that's where I find a lot of challenges with especially the small, well, even the large business owners, they want those systems to be locked in place so that they never change again. Well, that works great until you have a hiccup, be it a recession, be it a change in procedure, whether it's governmental or otherwise, where now you have to maneuver around whatever things coming up. I was working with an insurance company. Insurance companies are all about compliance, right? They always want to do things the same way because there's legal ramifications. There's also cost ramifications. So they want everything done just right. Well, at the last recession, we were talking about what things needed to change and they were asking their employees, well, what could we do differently to, to reduce cost or to be more efficient in what we do? And of course, everyone looks around at each other and scratches their head because they don't know how to be creative. Creativity is like a muscle. If, if you don't exercise that muscle, it's going to be very hard to, to exercise it when you need to. So you don't ask somebody to run a marathon if they've never taken two steps out their door. They've got to first start walking, then start running, then start running longer distances and so on and so forth. And us as business owners, we tend to forget about that because while creativity has its place, most business owners just want people to do their jobs. And as we're learning, people are ineffective that way and also hard to keep because if people don't see the opportunity to grow in the positions that they're in, they don't see opportunity to grow in the company, they're going to leave. And then you sit there and complain about turnover. And then you don't want to spend any money on training because they're going to leave anyway. Well, the whole reason they're leaving is because you're not giving them any opportunity to grow or any autonomy in the job that they do. You're just asking them to stamp out widgets. And that's never effective. So we need to look at ways in our processes. And that's why I like what you said. Videotape it, teach it, but then also have ways to keep it dynamic so as things change, they have a, an active role in making those changes happen and making those improvements along the way. Now, there always has to be checks and balances. You never want anyone to go rogue and just change something unless it's for the betterment of the customer and they have some parameters that they can work in. Sometimes on a customer service level, you need to have some flexibility to address that customer's needs without having to get higher ups involved in the process. At the same time though, you have parameters in place so that they don't spend a million dollars doing something that really shouldn't have shouldn't have happened. So we, yeah. there's all sorts of ways that we got to work around this. It's, it's a complex question that we, I'm sure we, you and I could both sit here and talk about oh, for hours wait. and hours on end. <laughs> yeah. But really it just comes down to put in place a system, put in place a process, have accountability, have follow-up communication, be willing to make time of yourself. Another thing as a leader is you, you really should make time to coach and lead your people. And it's not just filling up your calendar with a bunch of stuff that's not connecting to your staff and making sure that they're doing the best job that they can do. I love that. I think it's it's amazing. You're right. We could go on uh, uh, through a lot of different areas that you've discussed here and kind of dive into more detail. But that's why I want I want to leave a little cliffhanger there so people can reach out to you and talk to you more about that. I think this part, um, as you said, it's the time is now to start setting up your process, your system, mm -hmm. your system processes and workflows right now and prepare for the future, get it all down. One of the other things that I might add that's really important that a lot of people don't really think about when they're launching their business is an exit strategy. And an exit strategy is really important. And if Dan is there and has to be part of that business when he goes to sell it, guess what? The valuation is not gonna be as high because Dan's such an instrumental part of that business. And also Dan's gonna have to going to have to work with that company even after he sells it for another six months, a year, maybe two years during that transaction transition process so the new owners can come in and learn everything that Dan does. Yeah. That's why they gave you so this X amount of money because you have a great business, but they need to learn it all. Whereas if you had systems and processes in place and make Dan kind of replaceable, mm -hmm. you're in a much better system and, and, and much better place because – of the systems and processes. And that's yep. just my opinion. I agree with your opinion. In fact, I agree with you 100%. Bring me in. I can help you out with that. <laughs> um, I would like to I would like to add something to that 
that is probably more relevant to what is going on right now, though, with COVID and That's everything fair. else. Um, there are a number of companies out there that did receive the PPP program, payroll protection program, mm -hmm. and that is wonderful. The challenge I found is some people are kind of hung over or drunk on the fact that they got this money in and they haven't done the steps to protect themselves because this is a one and done folks. And if you see what's going on right now, I have some concerns that we need to prepare ourselves for whatever's going to come out of this COVID thing. And this, you know, it, it could be the increases we're seeing now. It could be the second wave that comes in the fall. If you are not prepared and don't have the right systems in place and can't figure out how to shift, pivot, be more efficient, it's going to hurt. It's going to be difficult. And I, I hate to be an naysayer like that. That's not my intent. Oh, I just want to make people aware is if you aren't putting your ducks in a row right now, you're not going to have time this fall. There's hey, not going to be a second chance. Uh, amen. Be, uh, it's you're, you're speaking my language a hundred percent. We lost a significant amount of business and we thought, man, we we're remote assistants, you know, distributed workforce. We're going to do all that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Was I wrong? And we put our heads down. We're developing a new site. We're developing new systems. We're developing new processes, new CRM. We're, everything we're tweaking based on the feedback that we're getting because we had a little bit of downtime. So let's execute against that. Let's take advantage of this time. So when we come out on the flip side of this thing, we're going to be one of those 10% of companies that are thriving on the other end. Yep. because We took the time to slow down, figure out where our cracks were, repair those cracks, make our process better, even better than we had before, knowing that moving forward, we're going to have to make some shifts and adjustments, but let's take this, take advantage of this time right now. And you're right. We got yeah. the PP loan. We got it. And we didn't worry about whether or not we got that. We buried our heads, made sure that we didn't bury our heads. We really got down in the drink <laughs> about, and now we have a great game plan line uh, in front of us. We're That's so awesome. Yeah. So great. Thank you for bringing that up. That's really, yeah. it, that's big. That's Keep probably. preaching about that because that's really what's going to have these companies survive whatever the second round or whatever. I hate using the word new normal because er, there is no new normal. There is always change. Change always happens. Mm -hmm. Some change is bigger than others. Mm -hmm. but you got to be prepared to maneuver around that change. And if you are not in a good position to do that right now, you've got time, but spend that time wisely and, and act quickly. Do not wait. Because if you wait, you'll be left in the dust because there are other people right now that are working really hard to figure out what's going to happen next. And they're, you know, you you hope for the best plan for the worst type things. And uh -huh. that's that's really what you need to do. And I want to say thanks to the LinkedIn user. <laughs> Jimmy Jay, good to see you. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Hello, yeah, LinkedIn uh, the user. Appreciate appreciate you. Appreciate you checking checking this out. Uh, Dan is a wealth of knowledge. Dan, how do people get in touch with you if they want to reach out? Well, there's many ways you can get in touch with me. I am on LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me there. Uh, I have a website, Envision Development or EnvisionBusinessDevelopment.com. I'm sorry, we're going through a a a change here. So branding change is coming up. That'll that's what I've been working on while all this has been going on. Or you can just give me a call, 608 23 or 60. Yeah, give me a call directly, 608 235 5320 or the number you see on the screen, 608 467 0223. Either one will get a hold of me. But would love to chat with you. Uh, the best part about what I do is I really look for right fit. So there are some people that just aren't a right fit for me. That's okay. If I can help you in any way, even if it's not me, I will help guide you to somebody else who can help you. So that's that's something I've really been known for. So by all means, reach out. I have a wealth of connections and information and am happy to, to help you get over whatever hurdle you are encountering right now. And sometimes that involves me and sometimes it doesn't. That's okay. Oh, fantastic. And, and thank you. Uh, you are full of integrity. Um, I highly encourage uh, anyone that is experiencing overwhelm and just doesn't know what the next step is and you feel like you're walking through quicksand or deep mud, uh, reach out to Dan uh, today. Dan, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with before we wrap up today's episode? Uh, other than, you know what, we all have, we got one shot at this life. You work really hard at what you do. You started a company, you started it for freedom. Uh, that's been my theme for this month, July, you know, being, 
our independence day freedom is is very important to us so we started this company for you know whatever freedom we hoped it provided us and then we found over time that that freedom got whittled away to where maybe you know we're kind of trapped in our own prison on it. so if if at any point you feel that way you've got to find a way out you've got to find a way out of your own prison because your company's only going to grow when you are on top of your game when you are positive when you are motivated and when you're passionate about what you do. And I wanna keep that passion going. So if there's anything I can do personally or or any way I can help, please let me know because that passion is something that allow you. Wow, there you are. <laughs> you clicked out of us for a oh, second there. <laughs> <laughs> but we got you. <laughs> but if you need any help, just, just feel free to reach out. Let me know. If somebody was reaching out to, for help there, they'll have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dan. Um, I, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you've been extremely busy, especially today with back-to-back -back meetings. And, and it's just uh, thank you so much for taking your time to jump on and share your wisdom uh, on Live with Bob. Jamie, thank you for having me. And, and thank you again for, for what you do with this and, and with everything else. I really appreciate it. Oh, man. Well, can you, can you hold on one quick second and I'll go ahead and wrap up? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, hey, hey, thank you to everybody that's chimed in today. Thank you for those of you that have watched today. Um, if you have any questions, if you're just lurking and kind of trying to get some information, you're not too comfortable asking a question because you may feel that uh, it, it, it's not you're not comfortable yet or whatever, please get over that and ask your questions away. Uh, we have guests just like Dan on um, weekly. Um, but we have multiple guests on every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Central Time. And the reason I bring them on is specifically to help address your challenges right now, to help stop the bottleneck in your business. And I'm, I'm telling you, people like Dan, these, these are some smart individuals that are doing incredible things in this world. And to have an opportunity to even just speak with them uh, is really going to help. It's it's. It's little things that they've done for years and years and years and their experience in certain areas to help you grow your business and get over that next hurdle. It, it's priceless, in my opinion. And that's the reason that I have people like Dan on. So by all means, uh, reach out to Dan today. He's the CEO of Envision Development International. You can learn more about him by going to envisionbusinessdevelopment.com. Send him an email, dan at envisionbusinessdevelopment.com, or give him a call, 608 Four six seven zero two two three. Again, my name is Jamie J. I'm the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Virtual Assistance, and I really appreciate you taking the time to learn how to stop the bottleneck in your business. Remember, remember this: create your own ripple. And uh, thank you again for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thank you.